It's a privilege to be able to share with you today. And I've got a question for you. Do you like taking risks or are you risk averse? One risk taker was Richard Larry Walters, otherwise known as Lawn Chair Larry. In 1982, he attached 43 weather balloons to his garden chair, put on a parachute, strapped himself in and then filled the balloons with helium. He took a CB radio, some sandwiches, some beer, a camera and off he sailed. He also took a pellet gun. His plan was to shoot the balloons one at a time so he could return to the ground. When his garden chair was untethered, he rose pretty quickly and reached nearly five kilometres high. He then began carefully to shoot the balloons one by one. Unfortunately, he dropped his pellet gun, but he had shot enough balloons by then that he was beginning to descend very slowly. However, as he descended, he became entangled with power lines, causing a 20 minute blackout to the local area before landing unharmed on the ground. Despite all the havoc he wreaked, there was one positive legacy. His story inspired the Disney film Up. One of the things that we might be tempted to do, given the challenges of the past 20 months, is to play it safe. I'm aware that in lots of our churches, the numbers of people physically attending are lower than pre-COVID levels. And for some of us, they are significantly lower. My own church's current physical attendance is only 50% of pre-COVID figures. On top of that, it's hard to find volunteers. We battled hard to keep things going and not all our activities have been able to restart. And it feels like now is the wrong time to be talking about taking risks. We just want to try and get things back to as close as they were pre-COVID. So the idea of trying new things can be the last thing that we want to do. Yet I think risk taking is essential to God's kingdom. We know the parable of the talents, the person who had one talent and hid it away, scared that they might lose it, was unwilling to take any risk at all. The point of the story seems to be that discipleship involves taking risks. And then there's the church at Antioch in Acts chapter 11. Up to this point in the story of Acts, the centre of operations has been the church in Jerusalem. But a new church begins at Antioch. It's made up of Gentile converts uh, after the church in Jerusalem had scattered. And it's a church at Antioch that dominates the latter part of the book of Acts, the second half of it. It becomes a new focal point for missions in the book of Acts. The church of Antioch was a church that was willing to take risks. The church was doing really well. Newly formed, it says, the Lord's hand was with them and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. There doesn't seem any reason to change anything. But when Barnabas arrives from Jerusalem, and I suspect he comes from the apostles to check out what's happening at this new church among the Gentiles in Antioch, he sees what's going on, he encourages them, and then he takes what I think at the time was a huge risk. He goes to Tarsus and he invites a man called Saul to come and minister in Antioch. Saul later became known as Paul, and this wasn't Paul the experienced apostle at the time. This was Saul who had caused trouble wherever he went. A couple of chapters earlier, we are told Saul was in Damascus and caused such trouble, agitation, that the Jews, his own people, wanted to kill him. He escaped by being lowered in a basket through the city wall. Then he went to Jerusalem, and after a short while, they wanted to kill him. So the apostles sent him to the religious backwater of Tarsus. Next, it says in the, in the verse, and it's one of my favourite verses in the Bible, that having got rid of Saul, the Jerusalem church enjoyed a time of peace. It doesn't actually connect cause and effect there, but I'm interested. Saul is gone and they enjoyed a time of peace. Saul's track record was one of unsettling situations. His intense zeal and demanding nature meant it was not always comfortable to have him around. 
And therefore, inviting Saul into Antioch was a huge risk. There was a potential of upsetting everything good that was going on there. Yet it's a risk that Barnabas was willing to take because he knew the call of God upon Saul's life. Barnabas doesn't play it safe. And then, not very long after, with the church at Antioch continuing to flourish under Barnabas and Paul's ministry, they are then willing to take another huge risk. In response to the Holy Spirit's leading, it says in the beginning of Acts 13, that they then release Saul and Barnabas, their two main leaders, to leave the church for a long mission overseas. I wonder how our churches would respond to releasing their most gifted people to go and serve elsewhere. The Antioch church, which becomes a centre of mission in the second half of the book of Acts, is an example of us of a church willing to take risks. They don't merely play it safe, doing what they've always done, but they respond to where they sense the Holy Spirit is leading them. I say this because I feel that despite all the challenges many of us continue to face, we mustn't merely seek to do things that are safe and comfortable, to do things we've always done. God's kingdom involves risk. We pray, we listen, we seek to discern what the Spirit is saying to us, and then we step out and we're bold, we're brave, we seek to be obedient to what calls us to do, no matter how risky this might seem. Following God's call for us and for our churches often involves taking risks. Let's pray. Lord God, I pray that we will be people willing to respond to wherever and whatever your spirit calls us to do. I pray particularly at this time, uh, where we might feel tired at, at having fought the battles over the past 20 months, and where things are not where they were. Help us, Lord, not to retreat, but to step forward and to step out and to respond to wherever the Spirit is leading us. Today, Lord, we open ourselves to you again. And Lord, we pray, this is your church. Lord, we pray, build your church as you determine. And Lord, give us soft heart, hearts to be obedient to whatever you're saying to us. We pray this in the name and for the glory of Jesus. Amen.